Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Bow and Arrow Tarot. Today we're going to be doing the July love reading for the sign of Scorpio. Alright, we're going to get right into the Scorpio and pull out your two cards from the Romance Angel Oracle deck. <clears throat> and see what the two main energies are that you're going to be working with this week. Uh, excuse me, this month really, this whole July. Alright, the weeklies I'll be doing later uh, today. Cards have been jumpy all day today as well. I've been meditating on you guys and doing some other readings. And cards have been very jumpy today. But nevertheless, we're going to wait until they calm down for a quick second. And we'll pull out your two cards. I hope you Scorpios are doing all right out there today. I'm on the East Coast. It's a beautiful sunny day. All right, Scorpio, your first card is romantic feelings. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. All right, and then we have calling in your soulmate. Beautiful. Your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you two together. So at the bottom of the deck, you have worth waiting for. Wow. So again, <clears throat> it's quite interesting. You know, I do find... Uh, a certain theme sometimes, sometimes with the monthlies, the mid-monthlies, there's like a theme that runs through um, some of the signs, you know, maybe two or three of the signs or maybe even four or five. So I've had quite a few readings now where all of the cards are quite in sync. So these are all quite positive cards, you know. There's no opposing energies. You've got romantic feelings and you're calling in your soulmate and you have worth waiting for energy. So that's pretty much self-explanatory, but we're really going to understand what that all means once we get your, your spread out. So we're going to get your nine cards out and see what all is entailed with these beautiful cards for this July period for Scorpio. What's going on for Scorpio? Give us a clear reading. See, cards very jumpy, jumpy today. Give us a clear reading for Scorpio. We want to get affirmations, warning signs, reaffirmations, anything to do with this energy this month for July for a beautiful water sign, water elemental of Scorpio. Okay. Help us understand these cards that have come out from the Romance Oracle deck. And give me some clear signs so I can interpret this for our lovely Scorpio stopping by today. I like anyone who is stopping by today. Get something out of this reading, whether you're a regular or subscriber or you've just landed here on the off chance. Well, thank you for coming and hopefully you'll get something out of this reading. So show me. Let's get into it. We've got the first one out. It's a victory, a six of wands. So that's a beautiful card. Temperance, 14. And the hanged man. Wow. Coming out of some stuck, to ener stuck energy, right? Five of swords. Center of the reading, you have king of pentacles. Mm. Four of swords. Four of Pentacles. Four of Wands. Wow, lots of stability. And eight. Interesting. Three fours in the reading immediately, plus 14 Temperance. Right? So we're talking about extreme amount of stability, right? Going forward. At the bottom of the deck, we have the Queen of Wands. Excellent energy. Queen of Wands. So the Queen of Wands is the queen who is, um, she's there to help. She's there to guide people, you know, to counsel people. She's been through her own kind of fire. You know, she's been through her own transformation. She understands the deeper sides of life. She has a firm understanding of the occult, and mysticism, theology, and signified by the black cat. She's open to people, but she's cautious. She understands the need to be cautious. It's certainly when you have worked very hard to attain a certain level of um, 
stability within yourself, spiritually and emotionally. She understands the need to guard that. Right? She understands that uh, she understands the need for guarding your energy as well. Right? Wands being the card of passion and forward moving energy, fire energy. She understands how people can be soul suckers, how they can be emotional vampires, energy vampires. She understands that side of life. Again, like I say with the black hat there, she understands how people can um, drain you, right? She, she understands the nature of that kind of dynamic, and so she's cautious. She's careful. She watches out for who she lets in close. She's a good friend. She's a good counselor. She is a good teacher and guide. However, she is very, very careful. And here we go. There below her is the fourth four in the deck, four of cups. All right. But the four of cups hasn't come through in a reading because four of cups is um, <clears throat> a little different to what the overall energy is, right? But we've got stability everywhere else. This is a very interesting reading, Scorpio. First of all, let's get right into it with the Six of Wands. Six is a journey towards harmony. So you're immediately talking about being in a place in your life where you've made a conscientious decision to only to only work towards more, more harmonious relationships, right? You've made a, a commitment to that. And in return, you get a little victory coming in. You get some kind of affirmation that happens that gives you a little... A little bit more self-confidence people notice the change in you if you look closely in the card even the horse is looking up at the character who's riding it um, it's this recognition it's the recognition that you get when people realize that you've made a change that you have changed as an individual six of wands comes in when for instance say you've been a certain kind of person for many many years maybe you've been not such a great person. Maybe you've had addiction issues or other issues that caused you to be uh, quite um, quite a damaging force in others' lives, right? I mean, this can happen, right? I'm not saying this is the case for you, Scorpio, but this is just an example of Six of Wands energy. Say, for instance, you and you realize this about yourself, but now you do all you know, and tell everybody you're going to change, you're going to change. People don't believe you, right, for instance, especially when you're dealing with addiction and addicts. You know, a lot of times addicts have to try many times before they win, and unfortunately, everyone else around them oftentimes gets fed up, you know, and so they have to deal with that aspect as well. But say, for instance, you say, oh, I want to change, you know, and people just like, yeah, well, we'll see it when we, we'll believe it when we see it, and then you do change, then you do change, and then you make this commitment, and you really kind of, um, you know, because sixes is a journey towards harmony, so now it's like when you change and you realize that it's a journey, you realize it's going to take a long time, but you have now come to a point in your life where you are willing to make the commitment, you're willing to put the work in, and you mean it. And so you start doing it and you start to change, you start to progress, you start to become a better person, you start to conquer your addictions, right? And this is when, say for instance, you return to a neighborhood or an area or a social setting or group where people used to know you before and then you walk in the door and they think you're a whole new person. This, this is exactly Six of Wands energy, right? So this is kind of reaffirmation accolades that of 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 um having a little victory a vindication a public vindication a public appreciation for everything that you've gone through right it's short-lived right but it is beautiful and it gives you a lot of self-confidence and it's specifically tied towards a commitment to working towards a more harmonious life, which sixes is the number four. So it's in that kind of commitment and in the, um, and as you start to um, get the fruits of the labor that you've put towards that commitment, that uh, you get this, this very, very specific type of attention from the people around you, right? And it ends up becoming a sense of self-esteem and self-confidence that increases in the suit of wands, in the fire, in your passions, in your self-confidence. It's a beautiful, beautiful card. Because when you're in your six of wands, you also begin to, it's law of attraction, you also begin to draw in people who also wish to work towards harmony and who also have made that commitment towards that. 
Temperance is here. So I do believe that some of you have very much been working on yourselves, putting that hard shadow work in. Temperance is a beautiful card. It's another four. Well, it's the first four actually showing up in your reading. It's the second four of the major arcana, right? So when we say four being the card for stability, control, um, dominion, right? Um, the first four of the major arcana is the emperor. So the emperor has dominion over man. He's dominion over the lands around him. He's the leader. He's the Aries. He's the child of the zodiac, the most expansive force, right? I mean, you have to have childlike energy to have that kind of pure drive to just expand and increase and go forward, right? Without fear, right? So that's very much that Aries energy, right? And it's in, in that, it's that kind of energy that is leader of men, right? That can, that can lead people, that can um, encourage people, right? Also, however, we get to the next four, which is 14, the second four, and that's temperance. And so now we talk about dominion of oneself, dominion over one's emotions, the, the dominion over uh, one's own pride, vanity, you know, controlling oneself in such a way so that you are the best person that you can be, so that you handle situations to the best of your ability, so that you're not reactionary, but you are a creationist. You manifest that you create scenarios and therefore are in control of them rather than only reacting to scenarios, right? You, um, you know, when you, when you exercise temperance, you hear things, you're open to things, you you know, your communication is not constantly blocked with your internal arguing and dialogue. You know, when you have temperance, you have a sense of quiet within yourself a sense of grace almost right which allows you to 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 hear the outside chatter coming in it allows you to be much more in tune with the outside world and therefore to handle situations that come along it's through temperance that people that you handle the difficult situations at work without flying off the handle it's through temperance that you're able to talk to your children or to your lover instead of it turning into a fight right <clears throat> Yet maintaining your passion and conviction, but without it turning into something that is out of control, but that is something that is kind of within your within control and therefore working towards a positive thing. You certainly come out of a hangman scenario, so you've been quite stuck, but hangman shows up. The hangman is an interesting card <clears throat> because he shows up when, when the hangman is already, his light bulb is turned on, right? So it's like ping, the light is on. It has it's not off. You see that in the diagram. So the hangman shows up when for quarants when you know for in, for when you have just recently already gotten a little wake up. You know that you need to move. Right, you already know. The hangman doesn't show up to let you know that. You already know that. And the hangman usually shows up to indicate that not only do you know that, but it's time to move forward with that. You're ready, you know. Um, hangman energy is quite interesting because he doesn't, he's, he's hanging there of his own accord, you know. This character's gotten used to kind of like, you know, he's gotten used to settling for less. He's gotten used to settling. He's found the comfort of settling um, for situations and settling to be in a comfortable situation. He's, he's chosen that in favor of the work um, that it takes um, to kind of break out of your mold, right? To break, to sometimes to um, work a little harder on yourself, on your goals, etc. right? It's like, you know, it's interesting. Sometimes it's like, you you know, sometimes <clears throat> I always grew up thinking like, well, if you, if you knew you could achieve something simply by working for it, wouldn't you, you know, why not just keep on working for it, right? I mean, if you want something really bad, you want a certain goal, for instance, you know, you want a certain lifestyle, let's say, right? But um, nowadays there is this kind of like very kind of apathetic, like a lot of people are quite happy to settle for a certain station in life as long as they're comfortable, you know, they... It's almost like, you know, they, they don't want to aspire. They're not aspiring to their dreams. It's almost as if they know they can't get them or they know it's going to be too hard. Or they don't want to work towards. So they're quite ha happy to settle for like this lesser version, which is more comfortable. But it's it's just that. It's just comfortable. 
but it's not elevating in any way. Now, the hangman comes along when something happens in your life that suddenly gets your um, enthusiasm and your passion going again. You know, the hangman has moved off his perch when he finally sees something that really is of enough interest to get him to move, right? You, you can't move him. No one can move the hangman. He has to decide to come down of his own accord. And, I ha and the only way he's going to, he ever does it is when something, either love, a love opportunity or, or a certain career opportunity, depending on the individual, when some kind of opportunity comes along and he sees it and it's like his head, you know, his head ping, it turns on the light, you know, the light kind of, begins to admit again because he's starting to open up his awareness and he realizes the possibilities. He was like, uh-oh, there's a possibility here, right, of me actually getting something and I really, this something, this is something I really want. Now, this could very much be a love scenario, Scorpio. You could have very much opened up to, certainly when we're talking about romantic feelings, calling in your soulmate, this is a love reading. It could be very much that you've come across an individual in your life that's made you feel like, hang on, I'm ready to kind of change, I'm ready to kind of move from what I've held on to and what I've been like comfortable holding on to. Now, when I say hold on to things, this could be just kind of a way, you know, a set behavior pattern, a set of like, uh, ideas. It could be a set of ideas about relationships. You know, you could be holding on to a certain kind of relationship construct, right? And this person may come across to you and, you know, you already know that in order to have any kind of relationship with this person, you're going to have to change your idea of, of, of what a relationship is. You're going to have to change the construct that you've been so used to holding on to. That could be an example of hangman energy too, right? I mean, you don't have to be stuck in all areas of your life. Hangman energy is just being stuck, right? It could be that you're just stuck in a certain way of thinking about relationships or about the way relationships should start or about the type of person you should have a relationship with. Whatever kind of, you know, whatever set of beliefs that it is, it's something that you've held on to to be safe and comfortable but now you're realizing you have to let go of them because this person that you're meeting is forcing you in a way and challenging you on those issues, All right? They're challenging you. And if you want to be with this person, you're going to have to let go of sort of like, you know, behaviors and assumptions that you've held onto for quite a long time. And I believe that's why this hanged man is coming in because... Uh, certainly with calling in your soulmate and certainly with these romantic feelings you're having, you know, I will, I will believe this is definitely like uh, someone that's got your heart going because only someone that appeals to a Scorpio's heart would have a Scorpio exercising temperance. You know what I mean? A Scorpio is so much their emotions and, and their mind and that kind of, <clears throat> you know, that uh, metaphysical kind of connection between the two and they don't they don't temper themselves for anyone. So if there's te if you're exercising temperance and certainly in the love reading, I think it's because someone has certainly got you feeling to a degree. They've got you they they've interested you so much that you're willing to do that and you're willing to come out of long-held beliefs. There is some kind of like discord though. There's a five of swords here. So somebody is not playing fairly. <clears throat> Somebody is trying to either come in and interfere with your scenario, right? Or they want something, you know, this is five is power struggle. And the five of swords is someone who wins, you know, he has hollow victories because he kind of wins by cheating. He doesn't play fairly. The other, uh, the other people have kind of walked away in disgust. They don't even want to duel with him because dueling, dueling with him leaves them feeling kind of like, he has no honor, you know. <clears throat> so this character is a real shysty kind of character, a real backstabbing character. They're very petty, right? So this energy is coming in for you. Now, this could be somebody who's quite jealous, right, of you. This could be somebody who's either jealous of you or somebody who feels as though they need to compete with you for this other individual that you've got your eyes on, right? King of Pentacles, is, it's certainly pay attention to this. It's going to be people around you acting like this towards you suddenly. And this could, and this is certainly has very much to do with this relationship coming in and with this new kind of like 
newfound like commitment that you've made to yourself to to have better relationships, right? And this kind of change. This could be an old flame who this could be an ex who sees that you've made kind of like a change and that you're willing to kind of almost become the person that they wished you were for them. And so they're going to come in and feel a little bit like they might want to mess up your dreams or mess up your your for emotion, you know. So just take care of this. Keep an eye open. King of Pentacles is in at the center. So I wonder, you know, King of Pentacles, this could be you as well or this could be your person. It's just King of Pentacles energy is like very comfortable, uh, industrious, man of the house, right? Um, it's certainly masculine energy, right? So it could be male or female, but it's masculine energy. And <clears throat> I almost wonder if this is the person who's coming to your view. Because it's like, it'll almost be like, we'll have to be somebody who emits this kind of kingly energy, this kind of level of energy to get you kind of interested, you know? And this could be very much a person who is masculine to a certain degree in their in their nature, in their tendencies. Um, they come across as being extremely intelligent and extremely resourceful. Um, they come across as having kind of their shit together when, when it comes to responsibility. They're very responsible. Um, and you like that about them as well, you know? Um, they're quite, um, I think you feel like they're quite dependable, you know? Um, they have, they've worked fairly hard to a certain degree for what they have. And I think that, you know, they just command a lot of respect and integrity, right? And this person has certainly got your, your eye. But here we go. Here's the, here begin this row of fours coming in, which is like, interestingly enough, this kind of... Uh, and I believe the King of Pentacles is one of the kings that is the closest to uh, the Aries energy, right? In, in the way of dominion over land and, and property and industry. But here comes in Four of Swords. You're kind of taking a break. You're sitting back. You're wondering how to move forward, right? You have, you know, you have romantic feelings for this individual, you know, they've caught your eye, but you don't know exactly how to move forward with them, you know, and like I said, I think, like I said before, I think this individual is causing you to kind of like, have to like change your MO, you know, change the way you normally would go about starting a relationship with somebody. So you're kind of in a little bit of an uncharted territory with this person because you know, it's just not the type of person you're used to, like, maybe getting into a relationship with, right? Or there's just something about this dynamic that what you're used to is not going to work. And you're going to have to adjust. You're having to adjust. Certainly to move forward with this person, you're having to adjust. Like, let's say, for instance, if you're used to relationships going quite quickly in terms of, you know, dating, hanging out, dating, moving in together, you know, quite quickly or something... You know, and this and this person has been taking quite some time. For some reason, it hasn't been moving like that. And you feel kind of out of sorts about it because you're not used to it happening like this. That's an example of what I'm talking about. And it could, there's, you know, there's all kinds of aspects to the relationship that, that this could be referring to. But it's that kind of thing. It's like you're not used to handling or you're not used to being in this kind of dynamic with somebody, right? You enjoy being with this person so much that you don't want to give it up, but you're not really quite sure. So you're really taking your time with this four of swords. You're kind of thinking back and strategizing, thinking up your next plan, your next move, you know, trying to, in a way, really to decide where you're at. You want to maintain the stability that you have. I think you're, if you haven't started, like, to see this person romantically, you will. You may already be friends with this person, but to a certain degree, there's a level of stability in your communication with them already, and you don't want that to be ruined in any way uh, by this, like, forward motion, this development in the relationship, right? Here comes four of pentacles, and this is the second four now. Four of Pentacles talks about stability in finance and in material wealth. So here you're trying to maintain you're trying to maintain your financial stability. The flip side and the warning in this card is that when you hold on too tightly for the sake of stability, in fact you don't you're not stable stable at all, and you actually start to manifest quite chaotic and quite fragile energy where things could, everything could just fall apart. 
um, at the drop of a hat, right? Um, so, you know, this you have to take care, certainly in finances sometimes, you know, a stability in money and abundance is when you have um, an understanding that you work for the money, right? You save, but you also enjoy and you spend the money and you ensure that the, the physical, the, um, uh, the material things that you work for are tied to a higher good or connected to a higher goal or spiritual goal to manifesting some higher spiritual goal and not made just for money's sake, right? Not made just to make money, which is inherently not stable. It's, it's not conducive. It's not harmonious, right? It's negative. It's discordant and, and by, and by definition chaotic, right? So um, so there's that, right, in terms of this as well, you know, so you're feeling this right now. It could be that you're meeting this person, you're seeing as well that this person is doing quite well. They're working quite hard. You could also be seeing this person, they might already have money or be coming into some money, or you can see that they're going to be very successful. And so you're also not only... I feel here for you, uh, Scorpio, it's more or less that you just want to maintain your own stability and you want to continue to maintain your own independence and sense of being able to keep up with this individual, right? You don't, you know, you, you respect this individual and you want them to respect you as well for your kind of accomplishments and, you know, your sense of responsibility as well, right? And so it's important for you right now, I think, as a result of this relationship, because again, this relationship is so different for you with this hanged man that it's like, you want to make sure that you're, you know what I mean? That you're good. Your coin is good. You're stable, right? You have everything you need. You don't, you're not coming across as someone who's needy or who's a gold digger or is trying to get over or anything like that. It's like you're trying, you want to maintain stability and a sense of integrity when it comes to your wealth and abundance, certainly in terms of uh, relating to this individual. And that's all a very good thing to be, you know, to have integrity about how you make your money is always positive. And here's your third four. Four of Wands, so stability in relationships. So the relationship moves on and becomes, you know, I think you take the next step. Certainly, after all of this kind of, you know, it comes in for you. The next step comes that you guys kind of like come together and I think you find each other wanting to move forward together. Because Four of Wands is stability in relationship in the way that you both very much respect each other. You re respect each other's energy. You respect each other's opinion and passion. You, you know, you have this really real mutual respect forms a stable kind of basis for a relationship to always um, overcome any trials or tribulations because you mutually respect each other. You respect each other's opinions. And so therefore you're never going to cut each other out. You're always going to work toward together towards the best goal for you and your relationship and so it's that kind of working together that creates stability in relationships that endures and this is why oftentimes this is called the soulmate card or the twin flames card um but just because these type of relationships by nature they endure for so long that they are they are soulmate energy relationships right they you know they they become soulmate energy they can become soulmate energy relationships or be indications of the fact that you've met your soulmate because you just work together in such harmony, right? With such stability. <clears throat> and here comes eight, the major eight, strength. So the eight being about boundaries, weaknesses, and strengths, you know? And I think that you come out of this feeling very strong, Scorpio. There may be some testing coming in after all of this in the sense that once you guys have kind of committed yourselves, you realize, yes, you do want to be together and move forward, right? That um, this, you know, there may be some testing coming in. There may be some time because this is also kind of like the early kind of beautiful stages. But then when you really get into the life together, there's pride to deal with and vanity and ego, self-esteem. So just take care. I almost feel like you know, you get strong from this relationship, but there's certainly, this certainly comes, a, a point comes in where you have to, you know, you guys still have to discuss boundaries, weakness, you know what I mean? It's each other's boundaries. And that's all part of establishing this kind of respect. There's nothing wrong with having conversations about, you know, what your boundaries are, what you require from each other, what you require 
from each other to remain emotionally healthy, right? You know, um, being honest that, you know, if you know that you are a, a worrier or, you know, that you sometimes get insecure about certain things, it's okay to tell your person, you know, um, your your lover that this is how you are and if they care about you, they'll, you know, they'll, maybe sometimes they'll let you know, they'll check in. So you don't have to sit home and worry. Like, you know what I mean? If you're involved with somebody who travels a lot for work and you're a worrier, you, it's okay to say, hey, listen, you know, I'm a worrier. I worry about you when you're out there traveling a lot. Can you please just check in with me so I don't have to worry? And if your person can say, of course, I would love, you know, I'm going to do that. I don't want you to have to worry. I want you to be comfortable and happy. That is how you develop mutual kind of respect and stability in a relationship, right? And that also includes needing this um, strength card, this Leo energy, because you need to be strong enough to admit these things to each other and to work together on them. You know, a lot of people might not want to admit that. They feel like, oh, it's a weakness to admit my weaknesses, you know, to people. It's not, actually. Admitting your weaknesses to a lover is a strength because it affords them the opportunity to help you through that. It's only fair, right? It's that it's mutual. It's, 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 it's the essence of mutual respect, which ultimately builds the kind of stability for long, enduring relationships. So let's just get some clarity here. We're at ooh, 31 minutes. All right, I'm going to just quickly pull out some thought cards so we can clarify this reading. Show me some clarity for Scorpio on this reading. I think it's very beautiful. You're bringing in some beautiful energy. This is definitely a new type of relationship. It's definitely it's going to be a very romantic, sexually charged, interesting, nice, nurturing, enduring relationship, you know, show me. Certainly something you've been waiting for for a while, Scorpio, I believe. For those of you who haven't been involved for a while, you have certainly been waiting for this, and it's worth waiting for. All right, out we got Knight of Discs. Magician, beautiful, two of discs, there's your change. Six of this and your success. There's your hermit. Wow, okay. Ace of cups. A lot of love. There's your hanged man coming in again. Five of swords and four of cups. Bottom of the deck, you have prince of cups. Beautiful. So prince of cups is the same as the knight of cups, right? He comes in with love. He's not necessarily committed. And it could be that kind of flightiness as well, but... More than anything, Prince of Cups is romantic. He's very romantic, you know. Um, he may not be the most committed, but he is romantic. And I do feel like you're feeling very romantic. You're feeling like you want to zhuzh up the romance in this relationship or somebody wants to zhuzh up the romance in this relationship. It could be your partner or your lover, you know, your soulmate coming in for you, right? So let's just get into the clarity here. Knight of Discs. So yeah, you see them two riding in. You get a little, like I said, you get a little victory. Um, you know, something's come in for you, right? Like I said, this the Six of uh, Wands could very much be like you having, you know, you've put this work in. You've, you've grown as, as a person, right? And you get this victory, but you also get Knight of Discs. So an opportunity is coming your way that has been a long time coming. And it'll certainly be an opportunity that's going to increase your physical well-being and, and abundance levels, right? But it also has very much to do with your passions. It could be that if you're um, an artist, it has something to do with your art. If you're a sports person, it has something to do with your sport. If you're a creator, you know, whatever it is, this this component, this this um, this financial wealth building com opportunity coming in with the design of this is certainly jiving with something that you're very passionate about and it's a lot been a long time coming so keep your eyes open for that type of opportunity coming in on the heels of this most recent victory that you're having this most recent you know kind of recognition that you're getting right so so here in comes the night you have the beautiful magician exalted over temperance. So you have really done a lot of work. Like I said, temperance is like you're in, you're you're just right now everything's working out well with you, right? You're 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 handling situations 
perfectly you you know socially it's everything's working out it's like everyone's happy around you you're happy around under others you're having excellent conversations you know you're not getting too drunk you're enjoying yourself but you're not getting too drunk you're having dinners but you're not getting too full you see what i mean you're exercising temperance and it's almost like you're in your perfect element you feel good you feel good around you and you feel like you're manifesting opportunities just because you're just in this really great feeling right Certainly, um, I think also this is something that has something to do with you just feeling generally buoyed up romantically right now. Hangman to this, so here's your change coming in. You, you know, your eyes are open. You realize that you you need to come. You want to come down for this for this person. You want to come down and change for this individual because something somebody's caught your eye. But it's certainly going to cause you to have to make big changes in your physical world. This could be moving, changing how you live. You know what I mean? Moving in together with people, considering moving in with someone. You know, it may be that you've been living singly for a long time, and now you meet this individual, and now you're juggling the idea of actually living with somebody again, right? This is certainly, you know, deciding or jug deciding which or how to incorporate two major parts of your life. Oftentimes, the solution is to find a balance, and not to choose one or the other. But it's certainly right now a juggling act for you, right? So here's the six of this coming in to clarify that five of swords. So certainly, yeah, somebody in your life is quite jealous about your um, your financial successes that you have coming in, right? The uh, opportunities that you have coming in, the real opportunities you have coming in, and they're definitely going to be throwing some monkey, trying to throw some monkey wrenches in your plan, use some underhanded tactics. So just keep your eyes open. A lot of times it's people who are closest to you, so no. This King of Pentacles and Hermit, okay, so you see this person certainly as having been on their own. This person has not been involved with anybody for quite some time, right? Your person that you're calling in, that you're having these feelings with, has certainly been on their own for a lot of for for a while. Um, you see them as highly you see them as being very spiritually evolved. You know, you just look up to them. You you have like an enormous amount of respect and integrity for this person. No wonder this person has really gotten you out of your hanged man, uh, Scorpio. I feel like they've really, you really met somebody who's really impressed you, you know, because you're seeing the hermit energy in them. You know, you're seeing how they've walked to a beat of their own drummer. You see how they've been through some very difficult times to, to, to come to where they're at, this king of pentacles. You know, this is very much about you seeing this other person like for, you know, they're catching your eye for so many deep reasons. And and they have to be for deep reasons, Scorpio, because you are deep. You know, you just don't love superficially. You look, you know, you're just that sign. You just look deeper, you know. And, of course, here's this instant of love that you're feeling that's making you hesitate. It's making you now strategize, think about things you don't want to rush in. Because now you're feeling all of these romantic feelings. Could be that you haven't felt them before. This could be a new person. This could be a friend. This could be somebody you've known for a while. But whatever it is, somehow it's like it's this pew. All of a sudden this like burst of like romantic feelings. It's like you've turned a corner. Um, if you don't know this person, this could be like a love at first sight. You, they may come into your purview or they may you may see them one day and it's almost like they stop you in your tracks, right? And it's just like this instant love at first sight, right? So that could be for those of you who haven't met this person or who didn't know this person before. Uh, for those of you who may have known this person for some time or been friends with this person, it's like an instant where you realize that you're in love with them, you know, and you didn't realize it before. Here comes your hangman to clarify four of pentacles, right? So again, like I said before, you're you're concerned about ensuring and making sure that you have everything. You you know, you're kind of like in looking at your finances, you know, you're worried about your finances. You want to make sure you have stability going into this. You want to be stable in your own right, right? Um, but hangman is over that and it's like don't be too stubborn, right? This could also be, you know, some of you Scorpios who might be afraid that, you know, because maybe you've gotten in relationships before. And when the relationships turned sour, you got really like burned financially. So you might be doing the flip side energy and holding on too much in a way, right? Not just wanting stability, but holding on so much that you're being miserly. You're not willing to split the bill at a date or, or maybe buy, buy dinner, right? 
or whatever, depending on who's buying dinner for whom. You know, you're just being a cheapskate. That's the other flip side of it. And so in any case, whatever this energy is, it's like, watch out, because the hangman's coming in and say, don't get, don't hold on to that too much. Like, you, we're asking you, we're telling you, here appears, appears the hangman too. It's, you, you need to come down and change if you want to be with this person. This is just a reminder that in the area of money, again, you need to change if you want to be with this person. You need to change the way you act or think about money, right? The way you um, either hold on to it too tight to a degree that you're a miser, you know, or you're too... Or I don't know, whatever way that you, you associate your abundance and status with your relationships and your love relationships, somewhere that usual MO that you're holding on to has to, cha has to change or give with this person because it's somehow not going to work with them, right? So don't be like, a, I think this is, almost feels like, I want to say it's like, you know, don't hold on to that burned feeling from the last relationships, you know, because you might fuck this relationship up by being like, you know, really like tight with your money, you know. If you're a guy, for instance, say you're a man or, you know, you're Scorpio, male or female really, but say in the last relationship, you know, you, you took care, you bought a lot for your person or you always bought the dinners and paid, and things didn't work out and you feel like jilted, right? And so now you never buy this person a drink or you never take them out for dinner or whatever. Everything has always got to be like, like, you're just not willing to spend any money on them. That might ruin your chances with them because you don't realize that you're holding on to some old negative baggage from this past, from relationships before that didn't work out. And so the hanged man comes out to remind you don't hold don't hold on so rigid don't get stuck you're gonna be right back up there hung again right you're gonna miss this opportunity you know five of wands coming in over four uh, uh excuse me five of swords coming in over four of wands five of swords right here's five of swords again this is the traditional five of swords, and this is the five of swords in the Thoth deck. So again, somebody is not only jealous and irritated by your financial success, but they're jealous and irritated by your emotional success that you're having in this relationship. So this could certainly be an ex-lover who's coming in, um, certainly an ex who sees that you're now doing better, um, that you're happier, you're making more money, you've got opportunities coming in, financial opportunities as well. Right, because remember, you have this financial opportunity up here to to increase your abundance. Right, something you really really love to do. They're just jealous, you know. And here they come in. They see that you're happy with this new relationship. They're gonna be pissed here too. So just watch out for this negativity that's coming your way. Just block it, ignore it, don't answer to it. You know, the best way to handle it is just you know be aware of it. And when you see it, just don't give it any. You know, just ignore it. But being aware of it makes sure it allows you to stop it from running amok in your life, right? You don't have to give it any energy. You don't have to do anything per se. But you do have to be aware of these kind of energies when they come in, right? Because <clears throat> if it does get to a point where somebody is starting to, you know, instigate problems or a cause and, and cause you real or, or make throw obstacles in your way that cause you real kind of turmoil right, or that is a real problem for you, you're aware enough that you can jump in and say, hey, hang on a second, this is not happening over here, we're not doing that, right, so it's not so much, you know, it's just being aware so that you can be on guard if in case you need to ever jump in and protect your relationship, your your job, your, your integrity, your um, reputation or whatever from those of you who may be out to tear you down. Eight of Major Canna, Leo Strength card is being clarified with Four of Cups. So there's your fourth four. So remember I said here, you, there's your Four of Cups, and I was like, mm, it hasn't come quite into the reading yet because the energy isn't there. But guess what? Here it is, and this isn't. This is. I mean, how can you? You know, you can see all of the clarity that comes in. You've got the Hanged Man in twice, Five of Swords in twice. You have all four fours of the suits this card this so this relationship is very much about stability four of cups means that you also are not taking empty cups you're requiring people to step to the plate and to show and prove that you know what they have to offer is in fact stable is in fact true and does in fact have uh, uh, integrity 
right? And that's all well, that's all fine and proper. That's what you're supposed to do, right? That's being strong. What did I say earlier about the strength card? We need the strength card to talk to each other about our strengths and weaknesses. And like, look, are you going to be able to do this with, with to help me through my weaknesses? Because I can help you through your insecurities or self-esteem issues because I'm willing to do this for you. I'm willing to call you a few extra times if it means increasing your self-esteem and putting your mind at ease, right? I'm willing to do certain things, right? So these are the kind of agreements and these are the, the discussions that we should be having, right? But a lot of us don't have that because we're afraid to admit to the things that, that upset us or that scare us or that make us vulnerable, right? But in so doing... Right, this is how you, you know, in Four of Cups, right? Normally, this is the person who, like here, there he is. Normally, he's just sitting there and he refuses to take the cup, right? But here we talk about more like, let's have this conversation. This is Moon and Cancer. Let's have this conversation so we can understand what is in the cups, what we agree upon, what do we agree um, constitutes a good relationship between the two of us, and therefore, what do we agree about uh, upon putting in that cup, right, as an offering, right? Are you agreeing to put respect or support and all of these other things in that cup for me? You know what I'm saying? So here's your fourth four. And so having these conversations is going to, again, make sure that you strengthen your relationship and that your relationship is stable going forward. This is beautiful. I mean, you know, very rarely do all four uh, do all four numbers of a particular, um, do all four numbers show up of the minor arcana? So that's to say, do all all four threes or all four twos, all four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or four aces show up? I did have a, most, a reading about a month and a half ago where all the tens showed up, which was quite amazing. But here we have all four showing up in the same reading, super stable, romantic feelings, calling in your soulmate, worth waiting for. This is a wonderful month for love for you, Scorpio. I, I don't have anything else to say. Um, if you have questions or comments, please sound off below. I love reading those. Um, if you just stop by today because you're surfing the web and you're not a, a subscriber, that's fine too. I hope to see you here next time. Maybe you'll um, end up on my channel by chance once again. But for those of you who want to hear more of these type of readings and get notified, just subscribe, hit the bell. If you want to uh, schedule a private reading with me to get into a reading like this for yourself about your issues in love or life or career, all you have to do is follow the address that's at the bottom of your screen right now. But for right now, I just got to say, Scorpio, wow, you got a wonderful love coming up. Have a wonderful July. Bye-bye.